What's up, guys? What's up? So some of you guys called me out on my channel saying I don't know what I'm talking about with this stuff. So I got the master here. He knows what he's talking about. So I'm going to ask you the question <laughs> real quick. Shoot. EGR versus DPF weight loss program. Which one should you do first or should you do them together? Together. <laughs> okay. 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 So here's why. So if you if you delete. Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. <laughs> You're a master tech, right? Yeah. So I know you don't believe in doing any type of deleting stuff. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> now, so. does that mean that I agree with the EPA decisions and carb decisions and all of the bull crap that we have to contend with today? No, I absolutely hate it. It's a pain in the butt to work on. It's ridiculous the amount of money that's forced upon the customers after their emissions warranties yeah. runs out. It's infuriating. It's we can sit here and go and put a whole bunch of adjectives about how I feel about this crap, but we're not going to go through all that. What I do believe in is operating within the guidelines that we have to, especially me being at a dealership. I have to operate within some guidelines when it comes to emissions control devices. I can work on vehicles that have been deleted. I can not delete vehicles at all. Even if you've got it turned off by a tune, I cannot just go in and remove your EGR because it's no longer functioning. That is something that I cannot do. It is considered deleting an emissions control device. So we've got that out of the road now. I have seen a lot of different ways that people are deleting. We'll go back to what I just said about just tuning that stuff out. Now let's talk about that for a second. When you turn out EGR function, you turn out DPF and DEF functions, all that, you still have the equipment that's in place. Now on a Cummins, you still have the EGR cooler in place, which those are prone to leaking coolant. So you have that problem, which can get really bad really quick, especially if it starts really puking coolant and you hydrolock your engine. Thus, you end up having to replace the entire engine because you were too stupid or too lazy to remove the EGR cooler when you did your delete, right? Now let's talk about the DPF when you turn off your EGR functions. All of that stuff goes right down into the DPF and because now it can no longer go through a regen cycle, it will plug its face off, literally plug its face off. It will restrict the amount of flow through the DPF. So unless you hollow that bugger out or cut it in half and remove the substrate, you still have the issues of face plugging which will cause drivability problems and performance issues. So do I believe in just tuning this stuff out or fully deleting everything in there? Of course, you gotta fully delete it. You can't leave those components in line and just tune them out. It'll work for a little while, but eventually you will end up with drivability concerns. Do I need to clarify on that anymore? Let's go back again in case you missed it at the beginning and say, I don't believe in deleting all this crap. I do believe that there is a better way to do it, but we're stuck within the parameters that we have at the moment. Yeah. So now let's talk about the impact of what's happening with CARB and EPA and the legislation and all that. And I've had other YouTubers comment that I don't know what I'm talking about, where I'm gonna argue that back at you right now and say, you don't know what you're talking about because I don't care what happens to CARB or what happens to EPA, there will be government oversight on emissions control, okay? Period. I don't care if they relax emissions all the way down, there's still an oversight. What if they do like Nevada's doing, kicking it down to the municipal level, and instead of just getting a fix a ticket, now you end up with a misdemeanor crime. Mm -hmm. So that can bring back to some of you guys who wondered why we returned one back to stock, because that truck was out of Nevada. For legal reasons, we had to return it back to stock. It could carry on through other states, especially if the other states start seeing the benefit financially for them of actually upping the ante on this and saying, okay, well, you delete your stuff. We're not just going to give you a fix-it ticket. We're going to make you have to serve jail time, pay a massive fine, and end up with a criminal record over it. Do the rest of the states follow that suit? That's a possibility. It's a high possibility. What is not a high possibility is that all emissions equipment is going to be legal to be deleted. That will never happen. Period. And for the rest of you out there who are listening to all these wannabes talk about it's going to be legal to delete your truck, you're sorely mistaken. They said next week though. <laughs> 
<laughs> this thing can delete it next week. You can't delete it next week, next year, next decade. You're not going to be able to. Yeah. There will be oversight in this somewhere. Somewhere, somehow, somebody's still going to have their thumb on your ability to delete your vehicle. Period. All right, so we've gotten through that. Now, let's say you do delete your vehicle. Do you do half here and half there? No. <laughs> you don't put on your underwear on top of your pants. <laughs> right you're gonna uh, there's a whole lot of analogies i can make here right you don't have wonky wonky time with your wife and not finish do you <laughs> so it's you have to complete the job if you're gonna start something complete it and you can't just get lazy and plug in a laptop you got to get out your tools and take off those devices or you will end up with a drivability problem at some point now you never see the guys down on the dyno days like the dude that just pulled 4,157 horse out of a common rail 24 valve Cummins. That guy works in his garage. He doesn't work at a big high performance diesel shop or nothing. He does all this out of his shop. But you don't see an EGR on that. You don't see a DPF on that. Why? Because they had to get rid of it to let that engine breathe, to let that power come. So if you're going to delete your vehicle you have to go the full step you have to commit to it and then of course keep all your parts so that when you do get busted you can put it all back on <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to yeah. end up with that fifteen thousand dollar bill when you have to buy all of that crap again so yeah. well people are talking about the manufacturer gonna start rolling out trucks without emissions control and i'm like who is telling people this because ford is actually doing it but there's only going to be certain but they've always agencies. been doing they've always been doing this but well. now the municipal levels have caught on to what federal levels were so you oh, if you okay. if you were a federal company and you went into ford you could buy a ford truck that was fully deleted by ford the the delete plate stamp ford motor company with the blue oval crap on them They've been, Ford has been doing that for a very long time. Dodge is now doing that too for municipal and federal vehicles. You can buy a 25 Cummins that doesn't have the emissions control devices if you are a state or federal agency. Now, that brings back a whole other topic of discussion is that if it's okay for the state to run it, why isn't it okay for us to, or I should say not run it, why isn't it okay for us to not run it? Why is their job that much more important than the rest of us? And yeah, okay, an ambulance, we don't want that getting depowered while it's trying to get somebody to the hospital that's dying of a heart attack. We definitely don't want our military getting depowered in the sands of Saudi Arabia or wherever the conflict is at the time because of a DPF plugging up thing. We, we don't want none of that to happen. But why can't we all clue in on what is happening in the aftermarket industry to where they can still build these engines in a different way than manufacture to run cleaner now some of you have jumped down the rabbit hole of the speed of air pistons and the concept behind it they've proven that it does work the speed of air pistons will reduce the oxides of nitrogen out of your tailpipe we've got the fuel additives from Lorenzo from you know the insane diesel guys if we can get the fuel to burn more stable from the injection sequencing then you're going to not only reduce oxides of nitrogen but you're also going to reduce soot so if manufacturers and let's say the petroleum industry which this would be a real smack in the back of their hand and they'll never allow it if we were able to get cleaner better fuel and produce engines that burn more stable we would get higher miles per gallon, more horsepower, and less emissions. Boy, we can rant off some stuff sometimes. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's my take on it. Um, I really enjoy watching all these videos about people deleting their stuff. It gets pretty comical that they are blatantly putting their face, shop, and vehicles out there on the internet for everybody to see them dealing, including the people who are going to have oversight. Yeah. It's a pretty risky business there. I'm not going to get involved in that until I've actually got a rule, a law, or an amendment sitting in front of me with the 
president of the United States signing off on it that it's okay to delete your stuff, I will not practice it. Period. Yeah. That dude just ran over that bush. He sure did. Hope what? that thing doesn't go into a regen with that tailpipe aiming right at that other bush. <laughs> I wish you guys could see this. It's kind of funny. This is pretty funny. It's I mean, a jacked up Denali that they just parked at a dealership over here. And their tailpipe is literally buried in a bush. And uh, they ran over another bush with that tire. So if, oh, they shut it off. Don't let it run and go into region. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's talk about that. If oxides of nitrogen are formed in high temperature combustion cycles, wouldn't it also be formed in a DPF that's going through a region cycle? Oh, you're right. It's literally like right there. Their tailpipe's oh right in the bush. <laughs> <laughs> well, these guys, they don't know anything about diesel. So this is, a, is this a used car line? Yeah. 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 Well, I, we can't say their name. Yeah, we won't do that. Well, you know, you guys got to stay tuned, though, because Josh is going to be helping <laughs> me remove my EGR just so we can show you guys how to clean it. Right? Oh, yeah. Show you the functions of it. We're going right? to show you the coolant path through it all yeah. as well and how... Well, you heard me talk about on the Cummins, you know, the same thing goes through an L5P. If you have an EGR cooler, you have a coolant path going through the exhaust cooler. Mm -hmm. That's what the whole point of it. You have to cool the exhaust before it goes back into the combustion chamber so that we can get the oxides of nitrogen down. Yeah. So we're going to show you how to clean those, what to look for when you are cleaning them before you clean it so you can see yeah. if you do have any kind of coolant intrusion into the systems. Yeah. But, yeah. It's gonna, gonna be it's gonna be fun. We're actually gonna just take a damn near brand new truck and <laughs> take stuff off so we can show you what it's made of. Hey, it's not new anymore. It got twenty two thousand miles on it. It's too, still new. So. It's a it's a diesel, man. This thing yeah. is gonna run for half a million or more miles. So twenty two thousand miles is literally like us walking down to the corner f to get a coke. Yeah. And, and we gotta do my oil change for the insane diesel promo yep. code down below. By the way. Yep. We gotta show because I'm running the Lorenzo. You've also got the Banks oil pen, got so we're also going to oh, yeah. have a promo code for the Banks products oh, yeah, we down got, there. I forgot. We got to see how that works out too. I yeah. forgot about that. Wow. Yeah, we got to send off that oil analysis and get the the sample back so that we can show you that. I am doing that this time too. So yeah, yes. you guys got a lot to look forward to. Like Josh said, he's going to be taking apart on a on a Duramax, the EGR, so you guys can see what's inside, see how dirty it is at twenty two thousand miles, and he's going to see about maybe cleaning the intake manifold, right? Yes. We'll show you how to do those things and then and, well the other thing that well, it goes back into the tie at the beginning of the video of Do you just tune the stuff out or do you actually remove it, right? Yeah, so while we're tearing stuff apart We're gonna show you what the face of the DPF looks like or actually in this case the DOC as well Yeah, and show you the potentials of what can happen if you don't remove these things and you just tune them Yeah So yeah, it'll be fun and then October 29th is my first surgery. I'll be out for a while. So hopefully during that six, eight, 12 weeks, whatever they pull me out of work for, we'll be able to do all kinds of content of me limping around on a scooter maybe, who knows. <laughs> but we'll be able to actually get into some of the finer details of some of the stuff that we're gonna be doing. Yes, I will be doing work at my house throughout this whole time. It's just, we're gonna be limited on what we can do. <laughs> I don't know how to ha off button. No, nope, don't know how to do that. No. Now the second surgery, I will have to go off on that one because that's my ankle. But whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know you. They can't keep you down, so it's pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> Guy, where you probably work what ninety hours a week? No, more than that. I probably work 110, 120 hours a week. I believe that. Yeah. You, yeah, got you figure I work nine to five. Or no, seven to five here at the dealership. So there's what fifty, and then I go home from the dealership and I work at home until ten, eleven o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. And then Saturdays and Sundays I work from eight in the morning till six, seven, eight, nine o'clock at night too. So I'm definitely busy all the time yeah. doing stuff. And you got two more uh, weight loss. Oh, not weight loss. I'm sorry. You got two more <laughs> bulletproofs. Bulletproofs coming too. Excuse me. One of them. It's a gorgeous truck. This is a show truck. This guy has powder coated everything on the truck. Blue. It's beautiful. I've seen pictures of the truck. It's getting shipped in, I believe, from West Virginia. So we're contacting him today to give him a date on when we need it hereby. 
so we'll have that one and then another local guy that we're going to be doing a full and these are both full programs one of them's not doing the turbo but both of them are doing everything from the fast fuel filter delete housing i gotta be very careful when i say i don't delete but then we're deleting stuff um the fuel filter housings we're gonna ixnay them because they're no longer needed when you put the fast or if you put the s and b or whatever the fleece the fleece kits are really nice too by the way i've played around with a couple of them but still tried and true the fast that's what i'm going to run with um we're doing the full banks monster ram on one of them the other one's already got it and it's powder coated blue um yeah that guy right now is in the process of all of these cool parts that we're putting on he's getting all powder coated nice so it's gonna be color yeah. matched nice. oh yeah it's we're ordering up like 500 dollars worth of foam off of amazon so we can wrap up everything as we start working on this truck and make sure we don't scratch <laughs> wow. any of it yeah so in other words subscribe to the channel yeah. and follow this guy you got some good content coming yeah we've got some good content coming i'm going to be dropping another video today of another uh, another lifter and rocker arm failure this truck got 34,000 miles and it the, the valve train was absolutely destroyed so I've still got to stitch all that together and get it dropped, so it'll either drop today or first thing tomorrow morning, but yeah. Like, comment, share, all of that good stuff, and uh, if you don't like what you see, bye-bye. <laughs> if you love it, pass it on to your buddies. And negative comments, I love laughing at them, so let me have it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Have a good one. Peace.